Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Today, one of the most iconic sports cars of all time, but this is not my car. Now, to those of you that are watching this in the United States, you know this gentleman. Those of you watching outside the United States, he's a comedian. He has uh, his own uh, car cast show. It's called acecarcast.com, or you can go to adamcarolla.com. Big car guy, very funny guy, movie star, author, Adam Carolla. Adam, come on in here. Great to see you, Jay. Good to see you, Adam. Thanks for the free pizza. We got pizza. Now, I, I said to Adam, hey, I'd love to do one of your cars, show up with something. But he wouldn't tell me what it was. So this is what he brought today. This is a 1966 Ferrari? Yeah, uh, 330 GT, uh, 2 plus 2. Uh, it's got a 4 liter. And we can uh, get into the engine in a right. second. I, uh, it was funny because 10 minutes ago we were eating pizza. And someone said to Jay, what do you think of the uh, Ferrari uh, 458? And he said, eh, I'm not a Ferrari guy. I'm not a Ferrari guy. Thank you. But, In front of this Ferrari? But I am an early Ferrari guy. Ah, I my, see. One of my favorite cars was the coupe version of this car. It is still my all-time <clears> favorite <throat> Ferrari with the long nose and the whole deal. Uh, I, I just like how accessible these are and easy to work on. Oh, yeah. Uh, the modern yeah. Ferraris, to me, are just way too complicated. You can't do anything in your home garage anymore. Yeah. You know, everything has to be done by authorized dealer, blah, blah, blah. Right. And I, I guess that's okay. But it's, it's just, to me, this is a car you can become intimately involved right. with. You but can, how many guys <laughs> who own a 430 Ferrari would be down in their garage? Honey, don't worry about the pot roast. I'm wrenching yeah. on the 430. Well, that's what we need. That's what you need more of. I mean, to me... You know, I'm amazed at the number of guys I know that flip exotic cars, whether it's Ferrari or Lamborghini or Audi or whatever, because they drive them for a while, but they're not intimately involved. They haven't fixed the car. They haven't worked on the car. So when the latest thing comes along, they sell it and they get something else. How many guys do you meet? First off, half the guys who work for me, younger guys who mm -hmm. work for me, don't know how to drive a stick. Well, that's true. It's scary. Number two, how many times do you talk to somebody and they go, I got the Civic, or I got the Audi, or I got the whatever, and you go, oh, what do you got, the Turbo 4 or the 6 V6? And they go, listen, I don't own the dealership. And you go, yeah, wait a minute, you don't know how many cylinders are under the hood of your car. And they go, listen, I don't build them, I just drive. And you're like, it's, yeah, it's yeah. come undone. I mean, uh, when I drive my steam cars, my 1907 steam cars, someone says to me, now this doesn't have an airbag, right? I go, no, no, it, it's, it's a steam car. It doesn't, does not have an airbag. No, it doesn't. But let's get back to this. Yeah. Let's get back to it's this. Because it this a, comes from the classic era, mid-60s uh, Ferrari. Yeah, 1966. I, 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 love, I love this whole era, the Super America. I yeah. love from the 50s right up until uh, all the fun ended around the 70s. Yeah, uh, early 70s. And, and these are still, this model is still fairly reasonable as Ferraris go, isn't yes. it? Price-wise, it's 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 they're on the move, and the ones before these, the, I think the 250, two plus two, anything that has a two plus two, everything that says Ferrari and then says two plus two, you can just go ahead and lop 300 grand off the <laughs> price tag. Yeah, yeah. This car, I, I think it's a 275, the you know brother of this car that has just a has a shelf in the back for golf right. clubs. Right. That thing is probably. 375, 450K. This, because it has an extra back seat, is probably 150,000, something like that. You know, that. it's so funny. When I was a kid, these seemed so complicated. When you open the hood, you went, oh my God. And now it seems so simple, doesn't it? I mean, right. let's open the hood of this car and, and right. take a look here. As you can see, the air was much cleaner back in the 60s. <laughs> yeah. You didn't need an air filter. I just put those on because they were cool. No, they look cool. They look cool. And it's just a nice, clean engine bay. I always thought this was very sexy when I was a kid. The yeah, twin, me too. Twin oil filters. It seemed, it, it seemed so European. Yeah, and, yeah. And slightly unnecessary, but still so European. You have a... But your car just ran extra clean. Four liter yeah. motor and you yeah. just... But it is nice when they... Put the, I mean, we all know that thing where you're underneath the car right. and it's underneath the exhaust manifold sure. and, and you're stabbing it with a Phillips head screwdriver because you can't get a grip on it. It's nice to have them right there. Although that trick where they tell you to fill the oil filter before yeah. you put it on, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know how you do it with yeah, this. Like, yeah, I'm not sure. I think you have to tip the car sideways or something. Uh, yeah. But anyway, as you can see, it, it's, it's, it's fairly straightforward. Distributors are right here. Two distributors. That seemed incredibly sexy back in the day. Yeah. And I remember these cars were pretty reasonable secondhand. 
I remember back in the mid 80s, early 80s, I looked at the coupe version of this and the guy wanted $28,500. I said, well, that's ridiculous. Right. I'm not paying that. Sure. And now that same car is $400,000, $500,000. So yeah. to me, I don't know anything about the stock market. I know nothing about investments. But I know if you buy what you like, chances are other car guys like it and that will go up in value. So Absolutely. this is a better return than anything on the stock and, market. And you know, if people want to know where cars are going, you can go to those auction websites and you can just basically hit past auctions and see yeah. where stuff was going in 2002 and 2005. You get a pretty good idea of what a car's doing. You know, 66 is about my favorite year. I have two favorite years, 1932, because by 1932, cars were here to stay. So they come out with V12s and V16s mm -hmm. and four wheel brakes and all kinds of stuff. And 1966, because 1966 was the last year a car manufacturer could make whatever they want and send it here. And there really weren't a lot of government regulations. There's right. no big rubber bumpers on this. Right. There's no padded steering wheel. Right. Uh, there's no headrest. Well, it's just pure, well, like the Mura, pure that, design. That's, that's the thing. When they say, you know, whenever someone looks at this car, when lay people look at this car, they go, why don't we just do it this way? This is yeah. so beautiful. And yeah. it's like, well, they don't let you have these knockoffs would yeah. be legal. Steering wheel's got to have an airbag in it. It's not right. going to be contained in that little piece of aluminum. Padded steering wheel. These bumpers would not cut it. There's right. no crush zones. There's no side impact. Then we start getting into, you know, the AQMD and you start getting into yeah. smog and stuff like that. So your question to why can't they do it just like that is there's yeah, so many yeah. regulations. And then you have to all the stickers, do not drink contents of battery, you know, because, <laughs> oh my gosh. You know. Right. Do uh, not I, I, place I, in rectum yeah, on yeah. every cap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. They, they can't do it this way anymore. And that's, I think, why we love these cars. Yeah. And you'll see right about the era uh, in the early 70s when the government got involved and right. said you can no longer do it the way you want to do it, how car and car design took a real nose Yeah, And this is just, just pure Pinaferina. Look at that, just a nice, simple, elegant design. And look at this dashboard. Let's take a look inside the car. I mean, exactly what I like. Two big gauges, tack, speedometer. Yeah. Everything's laid out very legibly. Yeah. Very luxurious, comfortable seats. And I like the idea that they built the entire car around the ashtray. Yeah, yeah, look at that. <laughs> I mean, that ashtray, that's some serious smoking. Oh, yeah. I mean, and it's metal. And they have one in the back for the kids, too, yeah. because they like to light up. You know, in Europe, it's a different scene yeah, over yeah. there. Yeah, uh, I, I love it. Yeah, really. And it has electric windows, which is pretty rare for... Uh, yeah, it has, it has the power windows. And the thing that's funny and kind of interesting, and, and you may know this from your Mira and other vehicles that have electric windows back before they really trusted yeah. them, they all have a little knockout yeah, so you with can, an emergency crank just yeah. in case you yeah, can't yeah. pay the toll. And the windows go, uh, 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 they don't yeah, really the, come the, up. The electric windows from the 60s and early 70s make a sound like you know we're not supposed to be doing this quite yet this is 10 yeah. years you know it's so funny a buddy of mine was here with his kids who are like seven and eight and they got in my 65 uh shelby mustang and said dad look at this and they cranked the window up and then he cranked it and went down and then the right. other one said let me try and they spent the whole day just cranking these windows that was the greatest thing ever just cranking these windows up and down well, let's go around the back of the car here as well. All right. Very pretty rear end on this car. Yeah. Well, just classic. Dual exhaust. Yeah. Yeah, it's, there, there's something so clean, so simple, and so elegant. And, you know, the exact opposite of all the fins and all the tails. This, this and, rear window here pops out. Right. Proper leather interior. Just nicely done. Yeah. You know what I like? I like a thin door. Mm -hmm. like on the early uh, S-Class Mercedes. You know, modern cars, the doors are this thick because they right. got airbags in them and they got right. that steel. But, so you, you, even though the car looks big, you, you, you're doing yeah. this. Also, I, I like the, again, these cars were built for smokers. As you get in a modern uh, Camaro or something and the door sill right or the, the door yeah. things up here there's no hanging yeah, you're doing i like the yeah, i like yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the guy this car they basically went all right the average guy holds his cigarette where and would need to hold this thing and then signal with the cigarette and then we'll put the ashtray <laughs> here yeah. 
and the lighter will be here. We'll have an extra lighter, auxiliary lighter in the trunk in case he breaks down. And then down. the good thing is when he gets emphysema, you buy the car from That's the right. widow for like nothing. Yep. It's just fantastic. Well, I think it's about time to take this car for a ride. Well, I haven't driven one of these in a long time. I used to work at a place called Foreign Motors in Boston, and we took a convertible 275 in. I think we gave the guy six grand for it in a trade-in. We sold it for 7,500. <laughs> I love those stories. Yeah. I love when, uh, you know, Bob Bondurant had the Daytona Cobra. He bought it for five grand and right. he said, I sold it for 10 and then it sold later for seven million. Yeah. Of course. Well, this is a mechanically very heavy car. But I don't think it's heavy if you drove it every day. But after driving a modern car, yes. I mean, this clutch will really work your leg. Yes. And the steering wheel, this is the Ferrari of my youth. This is what I love. Big, easy to read gauges. Nice click in there. Great sound. Great sound. Let's take it for a spin. me crazy, but I prefer these older Ferraris to the modern ones. I just, again, just the mechanicalness of it. You know, it's very, you move the gear lever and click, it clicks right in. Yeah, yeah. Plus, I like the pain and sacrifice that goes with having to own a car like this. Yes. Like people say to me, you know, you get those things and they own you. Yes! Yes, exactly! I'm assuming this is a stock exhaust system because it, it, it's, it's not overly loud, but just a nice sound to it. This is just a nicely balanced, nice driving car. I have, you know, I bet you a lot of Ferrari guys would think this was more fun than driving a modern one. I know the modern ones are faster and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, sure. As you can see, the interior is a very pleasant place to be. Uh, there's your speedometer right there. One of my favorite things is, I don't care who the car guy is, Whatever the number the speedometer says, that's what they think the car does. You ever run into people? Oh, this car goes 300. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. It goes 300. Yeah. The fact that it's kilometers doesn't make any difference. Right, right. But you got your oil temperature. Notice oil temperature is about uh, 50 degrees hotter than your. Uh... Oh, it's like it's starting to break down a little bit. Water. Are we out of gas? It's a dime. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I filled it up. I think we are out of gas. I filled the thing up last time I, time I had it. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, that's what it is. I think we ran out of gas. A sticker on the thing that said I filled it up. Well, here's a nice thing, Adam. Look. You're now full. <laughs> well, good. At least nothing was damaged. Yeah, just my ego, Jay. Just my fragile ego. But what a wonderful car to drive. <laughs> I don't know what that is, Jay. Speedometer drive. Feel it? Put your hand on oh, the gear. Oh, speedometer drive. Speedometer. Oh, yeah. Cable needs to be lubricated. I should have brought some fuel and some Speedo drive cable lube with yeah, me. Exactly, exactly. It's just when the wife sees you leave the house with the Speedo lube, yeah, she yeah. asks questions. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, it's at this point you crank up the Wagner or the uh, Puccini, right. and it drowns it out. Basically, now we both know what it's like to have tinnitus. Yeah. This is the Mo Larry Curly option. That's right. Look. Wow. The needle. <laughs> the actual needle. The needle came off. Actually came off. Jeez. Well, it's been an adventure. We ran out of gas, and the speedo cable broke. And look, it vibrated so violently, it knocked the needle off. But see, the great thing about these kind of cars is you can fix it. Any watchmaker could fix this for you. It's an analog gauge, so it's right. easy enough. If it was an electronic thing that went through a black box, you'd be screwed. Well, the joys of Ferrari ownership.
And we ran out of gas and we uh, spe speedo cable broke and popped the needle off. But that's okay. This is a great car. And uh, the nice thing about these old cars is they're easy to fix. I want to thank Adam Corolla for bringing the car yeah, by. Yeah, that uh, the... that's humiliating, Jay. Yeah, there you go. Jay. We'll get it fixed. I know right now. I know what you're thinking. That guy's never coming on The Tonight Show again. I'm sorry. My my people told me it was full. I mean, I know. You know I'm a big fan. I, I know. I'm going to have right. another I book understand. coming out soon. I just need it's, it's It's a nice springboard to sell stuff. I just... We're going to fix this speedo cable. We'll see you next week. It'd be nice. Come on, let's pull it. <laughs>